Hey guys, Drifter here. I no longer pre-order video games, and I don't think that you should either. This video talks about the problem with pre-ordering in the gaming industry, and why it's very bad for the consumer. The gameplay that you're seeing right now is Advanced Warfare gameplay, but it's going to swap around a bit. I've got some GTA Online, Battlefield 4, the Master Chief Collection. Yes, I was actually able to get a match in that. Some Assassin's Creed Unity, and a couple of other sort of big offenders in this category, but we have a lot of COD because it's a COD-based channel. But anyway, I don't don't pre-order video games anymore because I believe the model is broken and unfair for the consumer and I believe that it leads to a lot of sloppy video game launches and a lack of accountability and I don't know if you've noticed but there has been a whole string of sloppy video game launches. Uh, the biggest offender recently is probably the Master Chief Collection because it's just about unplayable right now. Spending hours upon hours upon hours in matchmaking is not very fun and yeah you can play the single player but tons of people bought it just thinking that they were going to be able to play online and that hasn't happened at all. I'm also going to be talking a little bit about pre-alpha and like alpha access in this video, but not quite as much. Anyway, let's talk about the history of pre-ordering so that we can kind of see where this began, where it's going, and make sense of it all. Back in the early 2000s, gaming was not as big as it is now. It just wasn't. Gaming has blown up in the last 10 years, but 10 years ago it wasn't really major. And I'm basing 10 years ago because that's when Halo 2 first came out, and Halo 2 was the earliest that I remember pre-ordering being a big thing. It was definitely a thing before then, you could definitely do it, but that was when the pre-order hype began to get really, really real and people were blowing up these pre-orders and trying to get as many as possible. And it was a really serious and scary thing then. Did you not have a pre-order in 2004 when Halo 4, I mean not Halo 4, Halo 2 launched? Well, if you didn't, then you might not have been able to get the game. You might could get it next week when the next shipment comes into your local Walmart or GameStop. Probably, if there's not already a bunch of pre-orders for that shipment too because they couldn't manufacture enough. And uh, it was a real deal. Some games were so popular there were literally no copies and they would sell for extra money on eBay or Amazon. Think of the more recent console launches, kind of like the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. When they launched there were some pretty serious shortages. Same thing with some of the Wii variants. It's a, it's a similar kind of thing to that, maybe a little bit more extreme back then. But the cool thing about a pre-order was if you put in your pre-order you could reserve a copy of the game and some game stops like the one I used to go to used to give out the first order first if you were the first guy in the machine that ordered uh, like a November release game back in like April or whatever you would get at the front of the line and pick it up first now I even had a GameStop hold on to an Xbox 360 for me when those first came out like when Xbox 360 was brand new or whatever I had to be out of town for a day or two and they actually held my pre-order and wouldn't give it to anybody else which I was really grateful for and I got my stuff reserved I didn't have to fight for it other people couldn't take it and the game companies both the stores and the publishers developers whatever they got their money early it was a big win-win and everybody was happy. One of the biggest things to the game companies about getting their money early is that money has a time value to it. A lot of us gamers probably don't think about it this because not many of us are investors or anything, but money literally has a time value associated with it due to interest. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar yesterday because you can put your a dollar in the bank today and gain a certain amount of interest in it. And it's especially when you do it on weeks and months, like, you know, $100 today is worth like $105 next year sometime because there's some interest associated with that and when you do business that's even better because you always want your money now because when you get your money now you get capital you can invest it you can buy things you can do cool things with it versus money later you just sit there and wait for your you know future to come in think kind of like bank loans and credit cards how you get billed for interest except the other way around that's kinda of how it works on savings and uh, publishers and game stores at the same time kind of realized that they could get customers to pay for games months, weeks, kind of years early. And in doing so, they would get the money early, which was a value to them. And they could invest it, they could do things with it, they could pay debts, whatever, early. And it guaranteed sales, which made investors happy. Investors are very happy when they see guaranteed pre-order sales of such and such number, covering the budget, making a profit, blah, blah, blah. And it also gave very predictable revenue to both companies, which again was good for the stock prices, good for the revenues, good for their accounting department. It made everything very, very easy. Unfortunately, uh, pre-ordering became the norm right about the time scare city faded. There was a big ramp up in development, manufacturing discs, supply and demand, blah blah blah. We got plenty of supply now. We don't sell out of discs for games. We make plenty of them. You can pre-order the day before or the day of and still get copies that night. Though you go to the store like on the biggest game launch of the year and they'll still have copies after all the pre-orders are done. And digital copies are literally infinite. If you want to buy the game digitally, there's no reason to pre-order. Why would you get a digital
digital pre-order. That doesn't even make sense. You just load it up and download it whenever you want. Game companies and stores were not ignorant of this, and they had a very good practice of getting the money early and doing things with it. And I'm painting them as bad guys here, but again, I'm not trying to do that yet. The bad thing that they're doing is not trying to make money. That's what companies do, that's what they exist to do, and you're crazy if you don't do it and everybody started doing it, because if you didn't, you couldn't compete. Uh, but pre-orders would con eventually decline, because now that our supply has met up, nobody's going to need to do that. So game companies started doing these pre-order bonuses and hype campaigns, like pre-order the game now and you'll get these maps early. One of the one of the ones I remember the earliest of that was I think Gears of War 2. Like if you pre-order Gears of War 2, you get all the Gears of War 1 maps and you can play with all like your Gears of War 1 buddies on those maps or whatever. And they had big hype campaigns. Like hype campaigns for games begin years and years early now, or not years, sometimes years, two years, weeks, months, whatever, because they want to get as many pre-orders as they can because it gives them the most money now, it's the best return on investment, blah blah blah. And because of the pre-order bonuses, the pre-order DLC, and these hype campaigns, the pre-orders still continue, even though we have no scarcity. There's no reason to. We're not running out of Halos and CODs and Grand Theft Autos or anything like this or Battlefields. They're going to keep coming. We're going to keep getting pre-orders and nothing's going to change. However, uh, getting the pre-orders early changed the developer-publisher mindset very, very significantly. It used to be, if this game is bad or broken, nobody will buy it. And that was true. Like, if a game came out and it didn't work, it would get slammed on all the review sites. People wouldn't buy it. There wasn't, like, a whole ton of pre-orders. There definitely were some. And the game would flop and undersell and be a big negative loss for the company. So there was this big pressure to kind of launch the game. And a perfect is incorrect. No giant pile of code is ever going to be perfect. There's always going to be bugs, but it wasn't typically broken on launch. It, it, it would work to some degree, and I do admit that games have become more complicated now with matchmaking and multiplayer and all these sort of integrated things, but at least back in the day they worked. Now the mindset is not so much how to make the best game, but how can I make this look appealing now? to max out pre-orders. Like before the game is even done, before the final design decisions are in place, before anything, the hype campaign already begins. And we want to maximize hype so we can maximize pre-orders and get the most money now to guarantee the revenue and to do something with the revenue right now. But if people buy the game before any reviews or even impressions are out, they're kind of uh, they're kind of taking a huge gamble there. It's almost like with movies, you know, you kind of buy your tickets before the movie comes out. Trailers are very very good at explaining what the movie's going to be about, so not too many people are disappointed. But it would be like buying tickets for your whole family to go see a movie the very day the teaser trailer for Jurassic Park came out and not even the full one just like oh, there's the Jurassic Park logo I better go pre-order my tickets it doesn't really make sense and even if some people do return the game that really does hurt the stores and the companies they have both held the money for a while so they've managed to do something with it and they can get some kind of return on it and I'd also like to throw in here that sometimes DLC is made to ensure that games are not returned one of the bigger components of pre-order DLC and like some and DLC in general is just to prevent game returns because the companies do get charged back for that and it kind of sucks. But it really changed the sort of attitude. It's no longer like how can I put out the best, most polished finish. It's like what can I do to meet my deadlines? What are we going to launch when it is ready, when it is live? And because of that, quality has since dropped. Game, game launches, especially really, really big ones, have become increasingly unpolished. There's been really, really big problems with this. Battlefield 4 was so incredibly broken that EA actually got sued by investors in a class action lawsuit stating that they were misled about the progress of the game because like basically EA was telling them that the game was going to launch it was going to be smooth and fine and that it was you know certain deadlines are being met and then when Battlefield 4 launched it was such a colossal broken mess that most people couldn't play it. I played it mostly on PC and I'd say on PC it worked like 75% of the time with some weird bugs and it was fun. I had a console version, my PlayStation 4 version. It almost never worked. Like it worked for maybe launch day and then just stopped totally. Uh, Xbox One, I had some friends, it was even worse. I couldn't play it. It was just a broken mess which is a shame because I like Battlefield 4. When I could play Battlefield 4, and I can now but I don't often because I left it behind because it was broken for so long, it's a fantastic game. It's really fun. I probably have more fun playing Battlefield than I do Call of Duty sometimes, but I just can't play Broken Field 4. Uh, GTA Online is another good example. When GTA Online, it was pushed back for a while, and then when it launched, it was a really big mess for several weeks. 
it's been fixed. And that one probably got fixed faster than any of the rest of them, but it was still embarrassing that it launched like that. I cannot even keep up with all the Assassin's Creed Unity controversies, so I don't really do a lot of single-player games here on this channel, and the Assassin's Creed series is not one that I profess to have any sort of expertise or great deal of experience in. But the amount of complaining, the amount of uh, just incendiary hate online, and all the crazy things that I read about it, and what the company's doing to like fix that, just I'm, that, that that's another big controversial one, but I'm not going to profess my expertise on it. And uh, of all of these, the Master Chief Collection is literally the worst. Uh, I was going to buy it. I, I was in the store and I think I tweeted out to my fans asking if it was worth buying like a day or two after it came out and 100% of my fans told me no don't buy it because you cannot play the multiplayer and there were a few saying don't buy it now but wait like a week or two and the multiplayer will be fixed. Well guess what? It's been out for almost a month and the multiplayer is in no way fixed whatsoever. It takes hours, literally hours, to get into a single match and some of the playlists and it, it's laggy and spawn issues and it's a huge huge mess and it's embarrassing why would these massive titles Grand Theft Auto, Assassin's Creed, GTA, Master Chief Universe, I'll put Call of Duty on there, Advanced Warfare launched with a bunch of bugs too it still has lag issues, there's matchmaking issues, there's unlock and progression issues why would these AAA titles even launch like that because a game that launched like broken and damaged shouldn't get good sales the reality is that they can because we all pre-ordered so many, you know, copies of this game that they've already made their money back and some degree of profit before the game has even launched. After they launch, somebody's going to buy it eventually and then you sell DLC and there's not the same sort of need or like the critical essential components of quality that have to be there. Like previously, like I said, if a game was broken, you don't buy it. it it's done. It's it, it's dead on arrival. But now, because we've pre-ordered these games, we're gonna get them anyway. And then you gotta, you know, the foolish people get them, and they make their money back before the game is even launched. There's not. You don't have to make it perfect. You don't have to make it work. You just have to deliver something, and it'll go. And I feel that's very anti-consumer. And not only is it anti-consumer, but it's bad for the industry as a whole. It drags the quality down. It's it's embarrassing sometimes to call myself a gamer and then watch some of the games that come out and it doesn't doesn't even work right. And as bad as that is, like you you know, I'm I've been bagging on like triple A publishers here for a while. In the indie section, it's even worse. It's a this pre-order pre-alpha thing is like a cancer to gaming. It started with, it probably started with Minecraft, okay? So Minecraft did it right. If you go and you buy Minecraft, even still, even though it's not an alpha, but especially when you're an alpha, you bought it, and you get all future versions of Minecraft. Any version of Minecraft, any update, upgrade, sequel, whatever that comes out, you get it because you bought it in alpha. And Minecraft was not a perfect game in alpha, but it progressed and got better and better and better, and it's extremely popular and extremely good, and it's, it's an excellent game. However, for every company that does this alpha access right, there's like 10,000 that do it wrong. Do I need to mention DayZ? I didn't, I'm just putting the picture up here. I didn't even get DayZ gameplay for this commentary because it's so buggy and weird. It like crashes all the time and I, I don't even bother with DayZ anymore. I've completely retired from that game because even after like two or three, I don't know, like the mod was out ages ago and then the game is what, like a year old or something? It still doesn't even play right, so screw it. Why would I do, why would I buy alpha access for that? And DayZ is even better alpha access than some of these games. Some of these independent games you buy and it's just a pile of garbage and they're giving you like alpha access to absolutely nothing. And I don't even know how that can be legal. Like I would totally return. I'd get on Steam and argue about it. And these things are really, really screwing up the gaming industry and the games that I play and it makes them unfun. There are, and I will play devil's advocate, some good things about pre-ordering. Uh, a highly pre-ordered game should ensure some extra funding to a development team to improve the game. A lot of these do have fixed budget, but like if an unexpected, if a game becomes unexpectedly popular and it gets a whole boatload of pre-orders, I don't see why some of that funding couldn't go to the dev team to improve it. Ideally, that's how things would work. And you can, from just a consumer perspective, if you're not a very wealthy person, and believe me, there have been times where I've been in my life very rich and very poor, so I've had I bought games in cash and I've had to put them on layaway. Pre-ordering them is a lot like layaway. You can pay them off slowly. It's kind of easy to pay a couple dollars here and there than to pay the whole 60, 70 at once. And that's very nice for some people. But again, pre-ordering is not good for the gaming industry. And that's why I don't pre-order anymore. I don't pre-order because I don't get any benefit from it. I don't care about the pre-order bonus, DLC, upgrade, points, whatever in the world. The maps are useless because nobody plays on them. 
and I can get the same games digitally or the day of without pre-ordering and by pre-ordering I contribute to this cycle and make it worse so I encourage you not to pre-order games it's just kind of bad for us however it's it's not going to die overnight not unless it just everybody that watches this video preaches about it I do have an idea of a pre-order bonus that makes this better that kind of fixes the problem and that's a uh, to make it cost less the earlier you order the less it costs like if you order a year early it costs like 30 45 dollars instead of 60 or if you order six months early you get ten dollars off or something like that at this point it is literally like an investment for you it's you've got your time value of money factored in because your fifty dollars six months from now is going to be worth more money you could have done other things with it even sitting in the bank or investing or whatever and there's a risk reward payoff the earlier you pre-order the less you know about the game that you're pre-ordering you don't know anything about it until it really comes out but as you know the trailers and adverts and reviews come out you know more and more and more and then you can cancel if you don't like it and if you pre-order really early on you're taking a huge gamble that this is going to be a good game and it's going to be worth your money and you're in some way incentivized for gambling with that discount that's all for this video i hope that you enjoyed it i hope you learned something useful and uh, i do hope you enjoyed my rants and ramblings and uh, had a good time watching as always if you enjoyed don't forget to like favorite and subscribe drifter out